when you promote anything, when you wear any logo, when you use any product publicly, when you give advice to your friends and family and you say anything kind about a brand, you're working for free. You gotta just press record. Man, I'm so excited to get into this conversation. Dude, congratulations on your book. Thank you so much. Bro, we turn on cameras, but you could still write a book. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> it's a very smart way to utilize what's in your brain, but create something awesome, a book about uh, talking about the, the career of being a creator and how it should be respected as an actual legitimate career. As a parent, it's kind of something that I need to accept. I'm an actual creator, but now my daughter is pulling out her uh, our smartphone and she's vlogging and stuff like that. And you tackle so many different topics in the book, but specifically, I think a lot of people watching this or listening to this um, are in a place where they are you know, struggling with either having a part-time or full-time job that is paying the bills and you see a possibility with potentially going full-time one day. I wanna to speak to those people and, and what you talk about in your book for those that wanna go full-time with content creation. Absolutely, we can definitely get into it. I mean, one of the things that I definitely want to acknowledge is that you have a lot of working class creators who figured this out during the pandemic. Facts. And they figured out how they were going to turn this into a sustainable full-time income without uh, putting their family in jeopardy. And the reason they were able to do that is because the pandemic changed a lot of people's dynamics and they were able to get time freedom. And one of the things we saw was not just people um, being in a place where they were forced to hustle because, well, the job is gone. That's what happened to Sean during the previous recession, you know, to right. him and Sonia. Well, what I saw happen was there were a lot of people who transitioned to remote work and then they were more effective, more efficient. They had flex time. They weren't always like clocking in the 40 hours. Right. And even if they were, well, now they didn't have the commute anymore. They had all of these options in terms of time freedom that were never on the table before. So they now had time and energy to focus on building this next career for themselves. No, I'm so happy you said that because I actually think, you know, some people – uh, underestimate the power of just reinvesting into their channel, whether it be getting somebody to make thumbnails for them or even start editing. I know you're early in your career, but like, is there, do you spend your money on a month to month basis on something you don't need? Like, if you know that this is going to be a respected career or this is a respected career that you could actually start early on. But what would you, uh, let's start with like one tip that you would help somebody who is currently balancing trying to build a YouTube channel and how they can uh, use something to actually take that next step. So one thing I would say is audit your time. Look at where you're spending your time. As much as it's a cliche, you can you know, look at your Netflix account, look at your Xbox or so PlayStation good. account and look at your uh, smartphone, pull it out and look at the screen time app because if you're saying to yourself, I don't have time, I don't have enough time, there's not enough hours in the day, well, where are you spending them? So hold yourself accountable by auditing your time and realizing that you can take that off the table and don't tell me that, oh, well, I need to relax because stimulating your mind with a screen is not relaxing. You're actually taxing and overworking your brain and it's for someone else's benefit. They're monetizing you. Mm. So I would say that you take back and claw back some of that time you're consuming and then invest that into creation and you do that with that time and that energy, especially the mental energy, but also even with your money, slow down some of your consumerism, Good. audit where you're spending your money and then say, I'm going to invest this in my career, the tools of my trade or even possibly training or into anything that makes me uh, faster or that buys me back time in my regular life, improving my lifestyle to where I will have more time Great. in my life to do the things that I'm passionate about because I've eliminated a time drain on something I'm not passionate about. Good. So you audit your time, audit your finances. What would you say is the next step? Let's say I did this. Okay. I, I shut down the apps. I took away the subscriptions. Mm. Now what do I do next? Well, next I would say, consider how you're going to increase your income. I talk a lot about monetization in the book. Uh, you should definitely buy it. It's on Amazon. Bang. Uh, and so paperback and Kindle <laughs> audiobook coming soon. Let's go. But, uh, yeah. Is it going to be you? Yes, the audiobook's right, going to be me. Go. But see, there you go. Look at what I just did. Monetize. There are so many opportunities you have. One of the things that I've always admired about what the team at Think Media has done is you guys have done very practical product reviews. They're evergreen. It's not always sexy. It doesn't go viral. But the thing is, it is a constant and consistent 100. stream of income because if you're going to give people advice throughout anything you're doing with uh, tech or beauty or anything lifestyle, you're recommending those things. You're already a salesperson for brands and you don't even know it. Every time you wear a Good. logo, you're a salesperson for a brand. Boom. Why are you not getting a commission? Why are you working for free? When you promote anything, when you wear any logo, when you use any product publicly, when you give advice to your friends and family and you say anything kind about a brand, you're working for free. Dang. So 
don't sit there and do not fall for the okie doke about, oh, affiliate marketing is a scam or it's scummy or whatever. It's like, you know what? Stop working for companies for free and get a small cut and commission every so time you help them move their product. So I would say that increasing your income with affiliate marketing is one of the things that helped me. I was a full-time freelancer when I started taking YouTube seriously, mm -hmm. but I didn't make really good money on YouTube. I got uh, into a bad MCN deal because there was no YouTube education community to okay. warn me. Wow. And big YouTubers didn't warn me. And that's part of why I started helping creators is for years, 50% of my ad rent sense revenue gone for years. Wow. I ended up being owed, by the way, $4,000 in back pay, and it took them years to pay that off. So I got screwed by a bad deal on an MCN that took my AdSense revenue, so I wasn't even relying on that. Those first few, of, few years of YouTube, something that really helped me was the Amazon Influencer Program, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes called the Amazon Affiliate Program. Right. And uh, what, I was making like 1200 a month within the first year of doing Amazon affiliate links. And when you live in North Carolina, because it's, it's cheap in the South, <laughs> when you don't live in New York and California and you live uh, somewhere in the South or the Midwest, 1200 is rent and utilities, my friend. 100. That's beautiful. No, I, I actually, we're here at uh, Vid Summit, and a lot of times I talk to people, a lot of people's goal is getting more views. And I always say, I was like, would you care if, to get more views if you were able to make more money now? Because a lot of creators leave a lot of money on the table. Facts. And so I always encourage people, when you have your video plan, also have your money plan for that video. How is this video, and you can literally list it out, how is this one video going to make money? And you could, you know, it, it's going to point to this book. It's going to, you know, lead to our, you know, your web class. It's going to sell a, a product. It's going to bring me clients. Yeah. It's, or it's going to set me up for a future brand deal 100. right now. And yeah. I'm going to use the affiliate link sales to then go to the brand and prove that I'm a good salesperson, prove that my audience trusts my word and buys from me. Because what the thing about affiliate links is affiliate links is the cousin. It is the not so distant cousin of brand deals. Right, that's so good. And it preps you for that. There's so many opportunities. That's great. And, and so I really do try to make that realistic and point it out to people. And uh, again, I think that a lot of people, I think the views thing, I'm glad you brought it up. I think that when we look at, well, who cares a lot about views? I think it skews much younger. I think that's a very much a younger person's game. I think that TikTok is influenced in some right. of that. I think that that's a culture and that people value clout more than cash. Good. But I think once you are an adult, you have responsibilities, you take care of people, whether that's your elderly parents and you're uh, a caretaker, um, a position I've been in uh, before my grandmother passed away, or you um, are trying to help somebody older in your family. I retired my mother with the income I make as a content creator. Um, I've helped my younger siblings. When you are responsible for people, especially the, the parents and the families out there, one of the most important things is you understand you have a responsibility to make money. Mm -hmm. You have a responsibility. There's nothing selfish. There's nothing greedy about it. You are there to provide for your family. And this is an opportunity to diversify how you do that. And it protects your income just like we saw in the recession, people lost their primary source of income. In the pandemic, people lost their primary sense of income. If you have a platform, even if you don't get attention or you're not famous, what's so wrong with having the ability to know that you can build an emergency fund, make right. the extra $500, $1,000 a month, you can improve some things in your family's life, your lifestyle, or you can create more security and stability because you're diversified now. You can't ever go back down to a $0 income so easily anymore. That's really good. So number one, audit your finances, audit your time. Number two, figure out a way to monetize what you talk about in Create Something Awesome, your book. And what would you say is the third thing? I would definitely say that you have to have a realistic approach to this, both in terms of expectations, but also mental health, balancing the relationship with your family. I was talking to a creator uh, that told me he was struggling. He has a very severe ADHD. Mine's extraordinarily manageable by comparison. He has, um, you know, he's married and with kids. I am uh, single out here uh, still. And so what we talked about was coming up with a plan for uh, balancing life with the nine to five. And I said, well, what if you, and I just made this as a suggestion. I was like, well, what if when you come home from work, you know, you actually restore your energy and your creativity by not doing extra work, not side hustling, and Monday through Friday, because that's his schedule. What if you gave Monday through Friday after work entirely back to rebuilding the relationship with your family and recharging yourself after not seeing them all day, um, after working to provide for them all day, and you spend that time with them? And then on the weekends, you still spend time with them, but you section out a good six to eight hours on Saturday and on Sunday to build your dreams. And the reason I said this is because I noticed something um, when I was in corporate. You only actually really work maybe 20 productive hours a week I mean, sometimes because they waste your time in meetings and <laughs> right. busy work. And so what if for a season of hustle, 
to improve your life and your family's life? What if you have a season of hustle where you give up the weekends, but you aren't giving up your nights and you give up part of your weekends and you still give four, six hours of uninterrupted family time or spread out family time until they're sick of you, like <laughs> with your family. But what if you still gave six to eight hours, um, two days on the weekends to your dreams, put in deep work, deep, deep work. work, and you, you know, um, batch record, batch edit, do those things. And that also gives the family time to do their own things without you and to be individuals and all of those things. And so you, you have this more effective balance and it's temporary because what you will do is with that 20, almost, almost 20 hours of productive work on the weekend, you'll be able to claw back more time at some point from the nine to five. You might be able to have more leverage with this money to go get a different career, and Good. then go to remote work and shift your priorities there. Dang. Maybe you move down to part-time shifts. Maybe you don't take that overtime anymore because you have another income stream where you're getting some more results. And so then eventually maybe you're able to transition out of the nine to five completely because you've managed with 20 hours a week or less to replace the 40 to 50 hours a week you were already doing. Now what happens if you double up on that and say, okay, I'll go up to 30 or I'll go up to 40 on my own terms, mm -hmm. spread out, flex time, all of a sudden – you have all of this freedom, this improved health, this lifestyle. The hustle was temporary, and so was the hardship. Dude, that's so good. And I love that you tackle this approach and this idea holistically in your book, Create Something Awesome. So we'll be sure to link this up down in the description. If you're listening to this, check out the show notes. Uh, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, where can people find you and what you got going on? Uh, so they can find me at Twitter, at Roberto Blake, and I am constantly answering your questions there. I'm also building in public and I'm also um, you know, sharing Star Wars memes over there from time to time. Uh, also, you can find more inspiration and a peek behind the scenes uh, by following me on Instagram. And of course, you can uh, watch my YouTube channel with over 1,000 free videos to help uh, content creators. And of course, make sure you check out the book. Check out the book. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you.